Overspending has become a common problem for Americans. About six in 10 currently live paycheck to paycheck according to a May 2023 Lending Club report. Now I'll let you in on a little secret here. One of the fastest ways to stop living paycheck to paycheck, you ready for this? Is to stop buying so much shit. Now in honor of me sharing this groundbreaking financial advice, I'm taking it a step further today. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over 10 different things that I choose not to buy in order to save more money. Some of these items on today's list have saved me over thousands of dollars and will continue to save me money throughout my lifetime. Now we're starting off a little strong here. This may ruffle some feathers, but for the first thing on the list of things I don't buy is tipping. Now please, please just give me one second to explain myself. Yes, when it comes to my servers, my bartenders, my barbers, I'm leaving a tip. That's not what I mean. Over the past few years, I feel like this tipping culture has gotten just a little out of hand. Now, what I mean by not tipping is when I go to order an expensive sandwich and I'm watching the kid slap some meat on the bread, wraps the bread up, goes up to check me out, turns the little kiosk around and says, hey, can you just answer a few questions? And then he turns the kiosk around and I look down at the kiosk and I see it's just one question and it's asking me how much I wanna tip for my already overpriced sandwich and the tipping recommendation starts out at 20 plus percent. That is what I mean by today's tipping culture is getting just a little out of hand. And it is everywhere nowadays from fast food to drive throughs Hell, I've even been asked to tip at my local spot where I get my oil changed. So with this, what I choose to do as the consumer is unfortunately I have to hit a lot of the times no tip. Now, don't get me wrong. This is sometimes a bit awkward, especially when there are a bunch of people around you looking at you checking out. Everyone knows you're answering the question of if you're going to leave a tip or not. And then whenever there's people watching and I have to click that no tip it, it's a bit awkward. But I will say this, as soon as I'm out the door, I don't feel awkward at all. The point is to say I'm not tipping on useless things that I don't seem to be necessary to leave a tip on. In the choosing to go through with a little bit of uncomfort, I keep that money in my account and I don't have to send it out as a tip. Now, speaking of tipping, that actually moves me right into the second item on this list of things that I choose not to spend my money on. And that is because I'm expected to tip for this service as well as pay additional fees on top of that. And that's food delivery. Now, luckily with my schedule, I'm not always pressed for time. So I have the time to go out of the house, to go pick up takeout if that's what I'm wanting to have for lunch. And with me being able to get out of the house and actually go pick up takeout, not only am I saving money on fees, I'm also saving money on tips that I have to provide to the delivery driver, but I get the chance to get out of the house for a little bit. With me working from home 24 seven, it actually is almost like a refresher to be able to get out, drive around, go eat lunch somewhere while not having to pay for the expensive fees that are associated with food delivery. Now we're moving right along here. I got a quick fun fact for you guys. Did you know that $38 billion is spent yearly on self storage? $38 billion with a B. Now, if you just stumbled on this video and were curious on the money that this random guy on YouTube doesn't buy, something about me is that I love a clutter free home. There is something that is enlightening and just feels better about having less stuff around the house. Every time I get rid of something around the house, it actually feels like I'm losing weight. I don't know what it is about me, if that's strange, it may be, but having less stuff around the house just feels better for me. Now, for me, I would much rather choose to get rid of some items if I'm running out of space in my home instead of having to stick those items in storage and pay a monthly fee. Generally, on average, the average monthly payment for a storage unit is around $90 to $110 every single month. And that's just the average. That means there are storage units that are much more expensive than that amount every single month. Let me read you this for an example. This is from an article that I found from a storage unit owner. Zanon, who cites the example of one client, a recent widow who moved in with her daughter and moved many of her possessions into storage for three years at a cost of about $320 per month. Zanon calculates that her client ultimately spent about $11,500 to store about $1,000 worth of items. When she finally cleared the unit out, everything she kept fit into two boxes. So that's another scary part about buying a storage unit is most of the time the stuff sitting in the storage unit itself is not even worth what you're paying for the storage. So for me, I choose to get rid of stuff. I choose to not keep things. If I haven't used an item in a few months and I don't think I'm gonna be using it in the near future, I get rid of it. It's gone. Put it up on Facebook Marketplace and try to make a few bucks from it. <laughs> 
Now, speaking of stuff, material items, moving on to the next thing I choose not to spend my money on is knickknacks and souvenirs. Like I just mentioned, having extra stuff around the house is something that I am not a big fan of. If I don't have a use for that certain item, I don't see the reason for me having to keep it. Now, one example in life when this happens to pop up a lot is whenever my wife and I go to travel. When we go to travel and we're hopping around different shops, looking at different items, we always see the little souvenir items, the keychain, the shot glasses, and my wife and I always look at each other and we're like, should we get something like this to, you know, as a memory or something to have around the house or whatever it is? And then generally we look at each other and end up saying no because we know it's most likely just gonna end up in a drawer somewhere and we're never gonna use it again. Our souvenirs and our knickknacks for whenever we travel or go places or when I have something that's of memory is our pictures, it's our videos. That is something I do do a lot of is take pictures and videos when we are out traveling or doing different experiences because that is what we like to look back on when we're on our phones we can go back in time and view different videos or pictures of our kids or us doing different things that we had a good time doing. Those are our souvenirs and knickknacks. Moving on to the next one. This shirt right here that you're looking at that I'm wearing in this video is eight years old. This sucker is older than my son, just like some of the other clothes I have in my closet currently. I'm a pretty basic guy when it comes to clothes. Hell, I have the same suit that I've worn to every wedding or every nice occasion that I've gone to over the past like 10 years. Although I am probably due for another suit soon. <laughs> if I do end up getting new clothes, it's usually a gift. It's just something I've never really spent my money on. I'm a pretty basic guy, like I said. I like a black t-shirt, throw in some jeans, or maybe some nice workout shorts, and I'm good to go. Now, number six is another controversial one. It is something I never chose to spend my money on, and that is extended warranties. According to a report from Allied Market Research, the global extended warranty market was valued at $130 billion in 2022, and it is estimated to reach $285 billion by 2032. On this channel, I have always preached about having an emergency fund set up in place for whenever a rainy day hits. This is basically cash sitting on the sidelines waiting for life to happen because as we all know, shit happens in life. Any car maintenance issue that may pop up or one of my appliances in my kitchen goes out, I know that I have the cash sitting on the sidelines waiting to be able to pay that. I like to think of it as like an insurance policy I have with myself. And plus, honestly, most of the time, trying to deal with these warranty companies and to try and get them to cover what they're supposed to pay is a headache in itself anyways. Essentially, when you buy a warranty, you are making a gamble on something going wrong. And luckily with me having money on the sidelines in an emergency fund, I don't have to make that bet. And ultimately, saving money on not having to buy extended warranties. Now, we're moving along to number seven on the list of things that I do not buy and this one is probably the biggest money saver on the list. This one has already saved me tens of thousands of dollars and will continue to do so in my lifetime. And what this is, is interest on my consumer debts. Now, first for clarification and to be fully transparent here, I do have debt on my current real estate investments. I take out mortgages to purchase real estate and I have to pay interest on those debts. The reason why I choose to pay interest on those debts is because it is actually getting paid by the rent that is being generated from that property. So that's not money coming out of my pocket. I use money from the rent that is generated to pay that interest. And with me having the luxury of being able to do that, to have the tenant's rent cover the interest payments and anything else that may pop up is because I'm taking on the risk of that property as the owner. I have to fix things when things break. And I'm also taking on the risk of having that debt to that property as well. Now, when we're talking about consumer debt here, I absolutely despise paying interest on debt that is not earning me money. Basically what that feels like to me is I'm holding $100 bills, I'm taking a lighter and lighting them puppies on fire. It felt like I was literally wasting money and one of the worst debts out there that you guys can have is credit card debt. And that is because the interest that you have to pay on that money you're borrowing is an astronomical amount. The average amount of interest that a consumer is paying on their credit card debts is around 25%. That again, is money you are lighting on fire and throwing out the window. And the way that I was able to not have to pay interest on my debts is by living a debt-free lifestyle. I just don't take out debt. If there is something that I wanna purchase and I can't afford it, guess what? I don't buy it. I would much rather keep that money in my pocket and use it to earn more money instead of giving it to the bank and letting them earn that money on something that I probably don't even need 
Anyways, oh boy, we're getting controversial again. Next one on the list that I do not spend my money on is whole life insurance policies. Investing with insurance companies is probably one of the worst decisions that you can make in your financial life. Now, I'm not gonna dive into the details on exactly why I choose not to buy whole life policies and why I think they are a bad financial product. Maybe I'll have to put together a video in the future doing a deep dive on whole life insurance policies. Maybe that's a video I can put together in the near future if that is something you guys would like to see. With the very high fees that are included with whole life insurance policies, as well as how expensive it can be to get out of a whole life insurance policy, this is what steers me away from this product. Now instead, what I choose to pay for is term life insurance. And this basically gives you an extended amount of time that you are covered for life insurance. If you happen to pass away during that time span of that life insurance policy, well then you will get the full payout. Now for my wife and I in our term life insurance policies, we chose to go with a 30 year term. The way I look at this is, is I have 30 years to get my money right. My kids will be out of the house after 30 years and hopefully by then I would hope that I have my money right to where I don't need to rely or my wife doesn't need to rely on a life insurance policy if one of us would happen to pass away Hopefully that doesn't happen. So that was also kind of a motivator as well to make sure my wife and I have our money right whenever that time does come. Now the next thing on the list that I choose not to buy is something that my wife and I have both agreed on and that is getting gifts for each other. Now men, if your wife's love language is receiving gifts every now and then, this may not be the best route to go. <laughs> But my wife and I's thought process on this is we don't need to wait for a special day to go buy something and spend an extravagant amount of money to get this one gift. Now, generally throughout the year, if my wife or I need something or we want something, we'll just go get it. I also honestly just hate the stress of having to try and figure out what I need to get my wife. Is this something she's even gonna use? Is she gonna like it? I would rather her just pick it out herself. Now, don't get me wrong. The flowers every now and then are still a great touch and that's something I still do spend money on every now and then. Now, last but not least is impulsive purchases. There's not much I really need to explain here. When I see something and I may really want it, one thing I tend to do that has really helped me on impulsive buying is if I'm looking at something that I really want or I see an ad for something pop up that you know I maybe would kind of want that, I always sleep on it for a day or two. After a couple days, that new excitement of seeing the item or whatever it may be, gives me time to really think about it and see if that's something I really need to spend my hard earned money on. I would say about eight out of the 10 times that I choose to sleep on it, think about it and see if I really need that item or whatever it is. Now over the years of doing this, this has saved me a bunch of money as well as not having to have as much crap around the house. So with that guys, those are 10 things I choose not to buy in order to save money. Thank you all so much for watching and until next video you all,